Hi, Transformers. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you're continuing to learn. And he said there's a secret that has been there with the grace of God, as that is the, what we are learning this week about the grace of God. There is something that is so hidden and we have to unleash it. We've got to look for it. We've got to know what it is all about. And this is grace. And we said that grace is elegance. Something that you don't strive, it just flows. And we agreed yesterday there is common grace and there is divine grace. Common grace, we said, it is a common entity. Common grace happens to all. But the divine grace is for those who, are, who have received Christ, those who have known Christ. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, according to Paul, he is a newborn creation. He is a new creation. And just like in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, we don't earn it. It is freely given. Then we went and said that the books that Paul have written, 13 books, imagine, each one of them, the salutation, he will always start with, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when the time he's finishing that book, he says, may the grace of God and peace be with you. And then now he greets the people and all that. In every book, that is, he wrote, and I dared you yesterday, I don't know whether you went out like the Bereans to check, is that true, Beth, that every book that Paul wrote, he would salute with grace and say bye with grace. If you did not, or you had not heard me yesterday, try it. The 13 books that Paul wrote, he would start with grace and end with grace. And I said, there is a secret there. And therefore, we also said that even Peter, as he was preaching and teaching, there's one thing he said, it is by grace that we stand. It is by grace that we walk. And then I gave the acronym of the word grace. I said grace is God's riches at Christ's expense because it is freely given. You are not earning it. It is freely given and you freely take. And then I gave a verse and the verse was in Second First uh, Peter chapter five verse twelve. In Christ, we in grace by grace we stand. Second Peter chapter one verse two. Grace, peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And we agreed that that grace we shall not just be saying, "May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ," like a poem. Mm -mm. It is not a poem. Even when children say it in class, we need to teach our children at home. It is not a poem. It is not something that was thought of by the clergy out there. It is a verse in the Bible. And we saw it in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And therefore we said, these two guys, these two people, Paul and Peter, discovered something so special about grace. And we discovered there must be benefits of grace. And I told you to tune, on to, tune in today for, so you can see the benefits of grace. So grace, I would introduce this today by saying great, grace is not static, as in it's not just there, not moving, not going ahead, not going behind. No, no. Grace rises. It is always rising. Given grace for each day, don't depend. Friends, we don't depend on the grace of yesterday. It is just like manna in the Old Testament, that you would not depend on the manna of yesterday. You go with your big basket, you go with your sack to collect manna. That, that, there is so much manna. So to that tomorrow, I don't come back for it. The manna for today was for today. It is the same thing, the grace of today. You need to experience the grace for each and every day. Just as we say, there are masses for each day. Even grace, there is grace for each day. And so we ought to operate under that grace. So what are the benefits of grace? Number one, grace is that charge that keeps you going till you finish the race. It is that charge, that, oomph, that, that strength, that strength that will keep you. It is that charge that will keep you going. 
Where does that, where do I get that from? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. Huh? And he's telling Paul, uh, he, Paul is telling Timothy. Timothy, remember, he was his mentee. He was mentoring Timo, uh, Timothy. Paul was mentoring Timothy. And he's telling him, Timothy, remember, I took you as my son. I've walked with you. You are my spiritual son. I have walked with you. I have mentored you. And actually, Timothy, you are my co-worker now. But let me tell you, my time has come. So what am I saying is, grace is that charge. Paul was walking under that grace. For him to walk from this time when he took Timothy as a young man, vibrant, they walked a lot. They traverse all round. Remember the Paul missionary uh, journeys. He went around with Timothy and others. And he's simply saying, I walked with you all that time. It was not about me, but the grace of God. And he was telling Timothy in chapter 4, I have operated under grace. And finally, I have finished the rest. Therefore, grace was the charge in this. He was given the strength. He was given the, the, the courage to continue. Then grace strengthens or grace is sufficient. Grace is what? Grace is sufficient. We find this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 8, when he's talking about the thorn in the flesh. And when he prayed about the thorn on the, in the flesh, God just told him, well, well, my grace is sufficient. It is a harsh moment. It, you feel like, no, I can't. But the Bible says, my grace is sufficient. There is enough strength to continue. So number two, his grace is sufficient. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 8. Number three, grace is always released according to a capacity of one's potential. As in, grace is given. You cannot be tested beyond what you can bear. According to your potential, it is given accordingly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. To each one of you, grace is apportioned. It is apportioned to you according to what you can bear, my sister. It is given to you, my brother, according to what you can get. And how I pray, even in this season, it is a harsh season, it is a hard moment. Some of us have, have lost jobs, but may the grace of God be there with you, my sister. Be there with you in your family, my brother, my sister, even the children, any child who would be listening to me and, he's one, and he's, you're wondering, how will it be? I've done class eight. How will it be? Will I go to form one? The graces of God is sufficient. He will make sure that you go to that form one, you who is listening to me. Mom, don't worry. The grace of God is sufficient. The, it is released according to a capacity of one's potential. You will not be tested beyond what you cannot bear. Then Philippians chapter 4, verse 14. Then number 4, grace produced the spectacular through and qualified and ordinary people, and you will ask God to help you in everything. Now remember Peter, I mean Paul, was out there preaching. He's out there doing all the work of Christ. But in Acts chapter 14, verse 3, everything, when he was teaching, everything with Barnabas and others, right? As they were going out there preaching, the word of God in Acts chapter 14, verse 3, the Bible says that everything they, talk, they, they, they talked about, everything they said, that the signs and wonders followed them. What happens? It is the grace of God that had given them the strength, that it qualified them. The, uh, Peter, remember? Peter, even Paul and others, even as they were going around, whatever they could have, it is Christ 
who qualifies. Let me tell you, do you know the grace of God can take you to a place that even you don't qualify? You can find yourself in a place and you wonder, how did I find myself here? Ask Paul, ask Peter, ask the disciples. They would speak and say, the people, they were listening. They would say, huh, these people are so learned. And I'm just thinking, I wish you knew who we are. We are fishermen. And it can happen to you, my brother. It can happen to you, my sister. You find yourself in an office. Because of the grace of God you carry, you find yourself having that. And remember the definition of divine favor, unmerited favor. Favor that you did not deserve. Favor that you wonder, how did I get here? All right, that was number four. Then grace gives abundance and all sufficiency in all things at all times. And all your needs are met. It is a continuation of number four. All right. So number four, grace in abundance. Grace abounds. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It says that the grace of God that comes upon you in abundance. That you can do things that you never expected you can do. And let me tell you that even you get to a point of promotion. And one day you look back and say, how did I get this promotion? It is the grace of God. How did I start this business? How did it just flourish? How did it just go so far? It is the grace of God. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the grace of God abides. It is abounding. And therefore, friends, as I wind up, remember, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And the grace of God abounds. And if it abounds, there are certain things for sure, my brother, my sister, that you can do. And you're wondering, how would I do it in this COVID season? Would I do, do parenting in the right way? There's so much stress. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, as you parent, remember, you've never parented during COVID seasons. We've never had COVID in the past, the whole world not only in Kenya. And let me tell you, his grace will carry you through. Even as we look at tomorrow, and we are going to see the grace of God as we do parenting. So we will call it grace of God in parenting. So God bless you. May his grace continue to be with you. May you abound in grace. And remember, take care, stay safe. Bye. See you tomorrow.